I was sitting there and my leg was under the Fantastic. I guess we're going to do this eventually. Okay. Um, so, I wasn't here Monday and I have to do my presentation now. So, yay. Uh, Amy and I, um, ours was split into two, was, uh, two different articles combined into one. So, my part was uh, called The River on the Promise. And here we go. Okay, so, um, it talks about this lady who had cancer and she went through chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy she went through is called the Red Death because of the side effects and everything that goes along with it. So in the process, she told her husband, who was a scientist, to create a better way to deliver chemo um, and cancer medication into people's system to prevent the side effects and everything. So he came up with um, this uh, molecule called uh, CRLX101. And it is an amylite particle, and it is 1 100th of the width of human hair. So it's really, 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 really tiny. So uh, this was actually put, uh, tried on uh, one patient called Ray Meza, and um, he was the, face, the first patient who uh, this molecule was used to do uh, the cancer treating drugs into the system, and it was a nanoparticle. A particle. Um, he had uh, pancreatic cancer that had gone to his lungs, so he was in very need of a way to treat his cancer. So um, it goes into um, different ways to May, uh, different ways to uh, send uh, cancer drugs into the body to prevent side effects. So um, before doing that, a couple of things you, we have to consider is we have to consider cell selection. So we have to consider how to send the drugs into the body so they will target the cancer drug, the, uh, the cancer cells, not the healthy cells. We have to um, think about how the chemo drugs will reach the cells, what pathway they'll travel, because both chemo drugs travel through the same pathway that other uh, minerals and nutrients travel through your body, so that is why they tend to affect healthy and unhealthy cells. So um, when a drug is delivered into a body, first the active agent needs to enter the body, it needs to travel through the bloodstream, it needs to get to the site of the tumor, and then it needs to penetrate the tumor mass and get into the cell. In doing this, it also, um, it also reaches uh, the healthy cells, which is what we're trying to avoid, because no one wants you know be sick with side effects when they have cancer or so. So um, one of the ways to treat, uh, one of the ways to reduce the side effects of uh, chemo drugs that it came up with was on armed antibodies. So this is basically, and that is blocking away the entire about that. This is uh, basically arming cancer treating, um, this is basically arming the proteins that sick cancer cells in our body with antibodies. So when they go to those cells, they get that protein, but they also get antibodies that will kill them. Um, there are actually two types of drugs on the market now that have uh, this antibody antibodies in them. Uh, this is one of them which is used to, one second, which is uh, used to treat uh, lymphomas that have not responded to other uh, cancer treatments. So this is normally when the person is in the later stages, nothing else works. They give them this medication and it's just antibodies that bind to the cancer proteins. And the second one is actually similar to what it's uh, the one that lent in class one lent about Herceptin. So what this one does is it binds an antibody to a very toxic chemotherapy drugs that then binds to um that then binds to the HER2 um antigens in our body and that helps fight cancer. And the really, really interesting thing about this is this is also used in late stage breast cancer. So this is for women who have gone through chemotherapy, they've tried other cancer drugs and nothing have worked and it's delayed stage. They've basically gotten your life sentence. And this drug extends your life by about five months, which doesn't seem like much, but to someone who was given maybe two weeks to leave, to live five months, it's a great extension to their lives. And uh, this article also goes into uh, coding nano um, particles. So this is uh, basically um, having the nano particles find your way into a uh, the tumor side. So uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make the nanoparticles in such a way that you're big, you're a little bit bigger. So they can't necessarily go through our blood vessels, but they tend to find your way to the blood vessels created by the tumors. So they tend to accumulate around the tumor. And this was found when they did animal studies. The downside with this is it also accumulates in your liver and your spine. So they are trying to bind other molecules to it 
So when your liver sees it, it, give, it, it mimics water, so your liver it, it, um, doesn't accumulate in your liver anymore. And um, the last thing we discussed was on engineering delivery. So this is uh, because nanoparticles haven't, nanoparticles are still relatively new. So they haven't, they haven't gone to the point where everyone can afford it yet. So they are trying to find other ways to, I'm sorry, they're trying to find other ways to, you know, engineer a cancer drug. So they are trying to use nanoparticles to deliver small pieces of RNA to the cell. So in a way, you're writing the cell. The thing with this is it is really, really hard to engineer medication for one specific person. So they're still trying to find ways to make that more affordable to everyone.
cells stop growing and they come into contact with each other. Uh, mice and most animals grow at extremely high densities, but naked mole rats exhibit contact inhibition. This may be related to the fact that they don't develop tumors because tumors are kind of uncontrollable cell growth that keeps growing when there's no room for it. Um, so even when scientists dose the naked mole rats with high doses of metal and carcinogens, there were still no signs of tumor. Uh, naked mole rats developed an extra defense mechanism against the generation of tumors. Um, they found that the molecular basis of this early contact inhibition and cancer resistance is due to the naked mole rats cells secreting a mo molecule called hyaluronin. Um, it is a large sugary molecule secreted by cells found in the skin, um, in the dermis and the hypodermis. Uh, it forms large change to make up the extracellular, extracellular matrix, which is the non-cellular part of tissues that make the skin soft, smooth, and elastic. Um, our cells also have hyaluronin, but the naked mole rats version is five times longer than ours. Um, so when hyaluronin is removed, naked mole rats become susceptible to tumors. So um, in naked mole rat cells, the enzymes produce hyaluronin as overact highly overreactive, overactive, whereas enzymes that break it down are sluggish and ineffective. So the net effect is um, lots of hyaluronin, therefore exhibiting contact inhibition. Um, when researchers interfered with the production of naked hyaluronin or overstimulating the enzyme that breaks it down, um, they're, they're or reducing its concentration, the cell becomes susceptible to forming tumors, similar to the human guinea pig cells. Researchers believe that naked mole rats evolved higher concentrations of hyaluronin in the skin to provide the skin elasticity needed for life, squeezing in and out of underground tunnels. Um, it just so happened to be a happy accident that it also happens to be a powerful anti-cancer anti agent. Because of its elastic properties, hyaluronin injections are already used in clinical settings, most notably as a pain reliever for people with arthritis and cosmetic treatment for wrinkles. Uh, much like in the tunnels of the naked mole rat, there will be many twists and turns to navigate before we know for sure if this peculiar mo molecule or the rodent that makes such interest and use of it can help in the fight against cancer. Any questions? So, so we have this... Uh, the, yeah, yes. we have that, but just in lower quantities. Lower quantities and in um, shorter lengths. Uh, so is it like a, a polymer? Is it like a large molecule? Like a protein. Okay. So this uh, article focusing on only the skin cancer or general tumor? Um, just cancer. Just in cancer general. in general. One more question. Thank you. Thank you for your patience.